In my other podcast, I have told you that New York City was the gateway for the gods to come into America. We also talked about the Stonewall Riots. That was in 1969 in New York City at a bar um, that was on Greenwich Village in New York City, and it was owned and operated by the Mafia. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about the dancing at the Stonewall Riots and the parades. A strange thing happened at the riots at Stonewall. During the backdrop of fighting and destruction, a group started singing and dancing. They were men with their hair in curls. These men with their hair in curls that started singing and dancing were under the spirit of Kizurchi. The lyrics of their song was most significant. They sang, We are the Stonewall Girls. We wear our hair in curls. We are the Zerf. We wear our hair in curls. We are the Zerchu. The Zerchu were closely joined to Ishtar. The goddess's home was known as the city of Kizurchu. They served in Ishtar's temples. These cultic women were known for their lovely locks of hair. They were called joy girls or harlots. They served Ishtar by singing songs and dancing. Let's talk about the timing of the Stonewall. The timing of the rites of Stonewall fell in a Pacific ancient month that had a close connection with Ishtar. It was called the Days of Tammuz. Tammuz was a shepherd. He was one of Ishtar's lovers. But one day Tammuz offended her. She sent a horde of demons upon him. He tried to flee, but they caught up with him and brought him down to the land of the dead. After he died, the goddess was in remorse. She began mourning for her. Her sorrow was so great that nature itself stopped bearing life. Finally, she went to the land of the dead and brought him back to the world of the living where he could dwell for part of a year before returning to the dead. The days of Stonewall were also the days of Tammuz, early summer, June the 26th of 1969. In 1969, the month of Tammuz started on June the 17th, just a few days before Stonewall. It is the most important days on the calendar of the gods, and the pagan world was that of the summer solace. This is when the sun begins to a- its annual descent. It was a time of rituals, worship, and sacrifices. With Ishtar, the sun's descent parallel with the descent of her lover, Tammuz, into the underworld. In 1969, the sun began its annual descent on June the 25th. It was just days before the events that would set everything in motion and exactly seven days to Stonewall. The month of Tammuz is not about the two lovers' union. It was about their separation. It was about the obstruction of passion and desire. Today's modern observances of June for Stonewall Rites was born out of frustration and anger over the destruction of desire. The parades themselves are aimed at tearing down all the walls of existence and to remove the hindrances separating desire from its fulfillment. It is a festival that celebrated men separating from women and women separating from men. It is a festival of inversion. Ishtar is strongly connected to the moon. Her father is identified as the moon god. She is known as the first daughter of the moon. Their Middle Eastern calendar was lunar based. Each month begins with a new moon, which reached its fullness around the 15th. It is called a holy day. The rites began on the weekend just before the full moon and continued just after it. Why was this date so significant? Ancient Babylon texts reveal it is the day to perform the spell, to cause a man to love a man. So the day that would seal Stonewall 
and launched the movement that would come was a specific day ordained from ancient times to cast a spell to make a man love a man. The Stone Wall Parade. In ancient times of the Middle East, Ishtar was known as the goddess of parades and processions. Her parades were part of her cult and worship. She would turn the Stonewall Uprising into a sacred event to be religiously celebrated annually with its own rites, observances, and festivals. Five months after Stonewall, gay activists met in Philadelphia and planned a march to recognize Stonewall's uprising to take place in the following summer in New York City. Guess what month it was to be celebrating? Yes, you guessed it, June, the last Sunday of June. You know it would be on a Sunday, the day Christians observed as the Lord's Day. Three other marches were planned for the same weekend in San Francisco, Chicago, and in Los Angeles on Hollywood Boulevard. On June the 28th of 1970, the year's anniversary of the Stonewall Rites, people gathered in Greenwich Village near Stonewall to begin the Christopher Street Liberation Day March. The name was taken from the name of the street where the riots erupted. It started with a few participants and ended with a few thousand before it reached its destination in Central Park. Pride parades began in New York City, the Gate of America. They started out as Gay Pride Week, but it was transformed to Gay Pride Month. The month of June was shortened to Pride Month. June had long been known as the time for weddings. The joining of a man and a woman in modern transformation would be all that more dramatic. Everything is all connected to the ancient gods. God warns us in the Bible not to worship these gods, and America chose these gods and turned their backs on the one true God. Let's compare ancient Ishtar's parade to today's pride parades. Ishtar's parades involved harps and drums, music and rhythm. There is singing, dancing, costumes, exaggerated makeup with heavy use of eyeliner. The parades were known for the bending of genders. They featured men dressed as women and women dressed as men, each dressed as both. They had public pageants with transgenders, cross-dressers, homosexuals. They used colored fabrics that can be found in the clothing, signs, flags displayed in the parades. Some descriptions of the ancient processions were unbridled and lewd. Today's parades look and sound just like the ancient days of the gods. Men are now walking in the footsteps of her ancient priestess and becoming her servants. Next is the signs of the rainbow. Gilbert Baker was an openly gay man and drag queen that designed the rainbow flag. It was first flown on June the 25th of 1978. In 1994, the sign of the rainbow was adopted as the official symbol of gay pride. It soon became recognized all over the world. The colors all represent all kinds of different things. There is not a common thread that unifies a theme to bind them all together and make sense. The only thing that binds them all together is the goddess. Pink represents sex. Red represents life. Orange represents healing. Yellow represents the light of the sun. Green is represented by nature. Turquoise is represented by magic. Indigo represents serenity. Violet represents spirit. Ishtar is the goddess of the sky, queen of the heaven, master tiptus, hurler of lightning, and giver of rain. She controlled the storm. The goddess's eyes were said to be multiple colored, just like the colors of the rainbow. There's a myth of the goddess and the gardener. 
A gardener plants a tree under which the goddess lies down and falls asleep. While the goddess is asleep, the gardener rapes her. When she awakes and realizes what has been done to her, she flees into, flies into a rage and begins sending down plagues on the earth. She then goes to her father to seek his help. He tells her where the gardener is hiding. She seeks out to find him. The goddess stretched herself across the sky to punish her offender. The rainbow was a mode of war by which she extended vengeance and judgment on the one that had wronged her. The rainbow in all its colors flowing was a banner of war. The rainbow flag represents revenge on who has wronged the gay community. The Supreme Court ruling on June the 26th. Three landmark cases all took place in the month of June. Look how June relates to everything. Stonewall, the Summer Solace, and the Festival of Tammuz. The most memorable landmark case that opened the doors to these ancient gods was the legalization of homosexuality on June the 26th, 2003, with the case of Lawrence versus Texas. This is the anniversary of the day Stonewall was sealed. It would be cited later that the same year by Massachusetts Supreme Court in the ruling that legalized same-sex marriage in that state, the first such legalization in America. On June the 26th of 2013, the second door opened with a ruling that would overturn the Defense of Marriage Act with the case of United States versus Windsor Inn. It would lead to the federal government recognition of same-sex marriages performed in states where it had at that point been legalized. This was 10 years to the date on the same day. Same date, different year. On June the 26th of 2015, the third door was opened with the legalization of same-sex marriage. It was with the case of Oberfell versus Hodge. This ruling will strike down the historic, biblical, and age-old definition of marriage as the union of man and woman. This new ruling will affect law, education, commerce, religious freedom, and virtually every other realm of American culture. These series of events were determined by different people, different circumstances, different decisions, different considerations, different dynamics, and no one person was present when they were ruled on. On the exact same day, the day the stone wall was sealed, unbelievable. Night appearance of the rainbow. On the night of June the 26th, there's that date again, on 2015, on that day that marriage was struck down, a sign appeared across America. It was the sign of the rainbow. The sign of the goddess lit up the Empire State Building. It lit up the waters of Niagara Falls. It lit up the iconic castle of Disney World, and most dramatically, it lit up the White House, the building from which America is governed. This was the Tenth of Tammuz. <clears throat> the Tenth of Tammuz was the day appointed from the ancient times for a spell to be cast to cause a man to love a woman. The Supreme Court's ruling to overturn marriage, enabling a man to marry a man, was on the Tenth of Tammuz. The spell had been cast. The sign of the goddess marked the land. Even the house that the nation was governed at. It was a sign of ownership. Ishtar was taking possession of America. Rainbows everywhere. 
The American flag is flown outside every American embassy in every nation. But today a new banner is being flown along with the American flag on American embassies. It's the rainbow flag. Now the sign of the goddess Ishtar is representing America. It shows that America has transitioned. Many corporate logos have been rendered to the colors of the rainbow. The rainbow is appearing on the flagpoles in front of schools. In the classrooms, children are being taught to revere the rainbow flag. You see the goddess sign appearing in cartoons, on television, and in their games, and postings on the internet, packaging on the children's snacks, their cookies, their candy, even cereal box. Children are urged to embrace sexual identities other than what they've been born with. The Transformation of America Within the span of the mid-20th century to the early 21st century, everything's changed so radically and profoundly that America was mostly unrecognized. One identity is rooted in one's past. The spirit of Ishtar set out to alter America's memory. America had to be given an altered memory. It would have to be rewritten. She would alter history by reinterpreting and removing landmarks and monuments. She would replace the old with new landmarks and new monuments. Stonewall Inn would now become a national landmark to cite the uprising against the police. What culture once rejected, it would now accept. What was once accepted, now would be rejected. What was once seen as wrong, immortal, and evil, would, would be seen as good. What once was seen as good will be seen as wrong. Right is wrong and wrong is right. Just like the Bible told us in Isaiah 5, 20. Study these scriptures in your Bible to gain a better understanding. Matthew 24, Micah 3, 1 and 2, Joel 1, 15, Isaiah 13, 6, 1 John 3, 4, Revelation 12, 9, Genesis 3, 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 and 3, Isaiah 5, 20, John 3, 19 through 21, James 4, 17, and Romans 13, 1. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Give me a like and share, and we'll be back with our next topic is on Molech.